this is where I was born. Yippee! Hey. Hiya, this is Steve here. Um, I did today's dig from my hometown of Reading. I hope you appreciate the fi film footage um, you've just seen. That was literally a stone's throw where I was actually born. Um, I couldn't take you around there because of time constraints. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And it was one of these weird days. You know when you go on a dig, I, I, I did not expect to find anything at all. Um, I was going into new territory record store wise. And I've been to the record shop. Uh, about 20 25 years ago uh, I had no idea what it would be like um, so I decided to give it a whirl and I thought I'd be heading heading up um, you know straight to the Oracle with my tail between my legs uh, picking up Udo's brand new uh, CD that was the B plan if I failed to get anything at the record store um, I'd uh, treat myself to Udo's new record but uh, as you're about to see, I've had an amazing dig. Um, it's just exceeded all expectations. Um, also, the downside was I only got hit by a push bike. I thought that was me in hospital. Um, you know, because these uh, I was outside a Reading station, just walking down, and this girl on a bike, uh, she missed me by millimeters, and I thought, it, and I just shut my eyes and waited for the impact. I thought, I'll, I hope it doesn't hurt. I mean, if I, I had been killed, that would be my last thought on this mortal earth. I hope it doesn't hurt. But uh, that was the excitement this morning, because it's a bit further afield than normal, and you have to catch a train. Um, but it's not long, it's about a 10-15 minute ride from here to Reading. Uh, you get off at the station, and the record shop's literally a minute's walk away from the rec uh, record, um, the railway station. And uh, I'm going to give them a plug actually. It's called the Sound Machine. And it's, um, um, oh, Harris Arcade, Reading. And I hope that someone sees this and say, look, this big fat guy uh, just giving you a plug. But yeah, I'm going to give them a plug. That's where I went. And uh, Harris Arcade, if you're into comic books or TV, film, and you want to collect all the stuff off, like the dinky toys. Um, you know, they do the old, like, New Avengers, the 60s stuff. They do all that. Unfortunately, both shops were shut today. Um, but I would have had a look in the, uh, where they do all the models now. I'm not really into the comic book side. But they've got this look, great comic book shop there. But I'm not really into that. But I'm into the old 60s film. And what scares me is, I remember most of the 70s stuff. Like the New Avengers, Professionals. And it does half make me feel old. But uh, without further ado, I think I'd better show some music, because it is the um, uh, VC, and I'm sure that's what you've all got your uh, popcorn out for, and paid your ticket to see. And what I thought I was going to do was, was this video in two parts. I've been racking my brains, but I thought, well I ain't got much brain to rack, but I thought I'd give them a rack anyway. Um, so I thought, nah, I'll go for a one-taker, just just keep talking and showing, and it goes on for over half an hour, it goes on for over half an hour. But, uh, now nah, the first record I bought, now this one made me laugh a lot today, and this is this record, Under the Blade by Twisted Sister. Now, this was their first ever release, uh, in 82, I believe round about that year and basically Pete Way formed a UFO then he formed a band called Wasted he was the guy who mixed all this but they were very raw when they did this album but this album I absolutely loved it um, for the simple reason is you get all the bonus tracks on it you get the actual rec record itself it is there then you get all the bonus tracks like Leader of the Pack and stuff and guess what, folks? In 1982, you get the Live at Reading Festival uh, DVD. Now, what's the chances of that, day eh, Buying a record in the home city of Reading, and it's one of my favourite bands of all time, and getting... Look, we was laughing like drains in the record shop. We just couldn't stop laughing. I mean, you know, it's like a million to one chance. They are actually performed at Reading that year. 
and uh, that was when Reading was a decent rock festival, not like it is now. It's, I won't pay what they are asking me to pay for a day's ticket. It's just not worth it. But uh, that's the record. Anyway, it was their first ever release. I'll uh, show you the booklet. You get a nice CD with it as well. That 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 always makes life good. Uh, you go into the swirls and stuff, and that's the booklet that goes with it. And that's all the lyrics and all the stuff there. But yeah, that was a great pickup. That was my favourite pick. You know, it's not rare, uh, but it just put a smile on my face today. Um, picking up a in my hometown of Reading. And they actually, I'll put, uh, they actually played live there. And picking all that up in your hometown. But the next one was one I haven't seen. Greg the Egg, have you seen this? Because I hadn't. This is Judas Priest Rare. It's called Live and Rare. Now the reason why it attracted me is it starts off with my favourite song of theirs of all time. Beyond the Realms of Death. But you're getting a lot of track uh, live recordings, studio recordings. I thought it was a bootleg, but it's not. I've never seen it before. I might have seen it and forgot, but this was definitely a picker-upper for me. And you get a booklet where it tells you where all the stuff was recording. Beyond the Realms of Death was recorded live in Cleveland. Aaron Metal Theologian should know about that. You've got White Heat Red Hot Live, Starbreaker Live, Breaking the Law Live, don't like that song, Living After Midnight Live, I can live with that. The Green Man Alishi, which is one of my favourite songs, Live. Uh, Pete Green wrote that one, I was just wondering who wrote that. I knew it was Fleetwood Mac, wasn't it, if my memory serves me. Breaking the Law Live, and you've got another thing coming. Um, but then you've got Private Property Live at St. Louis, I presume that's Missouri. And Turbo Lover, um, yeah, that was taken from the Parental Guidance 12-inch single. But yeah, I've never come across this before. I've probably seen it and, and forgot it. But uh, getting all this stuff with it. And uh, it's a rocker, as Greg would say. But I definitely added that to the collection. I'm a big Priest fan. I thought, why not? Uh, the next record was another one Greg's introduced myself to. And that was Axel Rudy Pell. I'm pretty sure I ain't got this one. This is um, Circle of Oath. And you get the limited edition digi pack, including bonus live track, and you get the poster. Um, and I presume it's all that's the poster, and that's the booklet. You get a pretty, really good presentation. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's it. But Axel Rudy Pell, if you haven't discovered him already, it's awesome. Uh, it's just amazing stuff. But there you go. Just a little uh, taster. I shan't show you too much. I'm looking at the time now. It's ten minutes. And I've still got a lot, a lot to show you. But yeah, that's Axel Rudy Pell. Former. He was in a band called the Steelers or Steeler. And I've got one of their albums. Unfortunately, I, I, I've got the not so good one. The first two albums were awesome. I've yet to discover them. Uh, one day. That's what I keep telling myself. One day. Another record I bought was Lita Ford, another favourite of mine, but this was a live album, Greatest Hits Live. I've got a sneaky suspicion there's some cover versions on there, because I can see The Ripper and uh, a few others, so uh, who knows, I might be wrong, but uh, yeah, I definitely picked that one up. I'm big, I like Lita Ford, uh, she had a look like Doro, but she had, the, she had a really good voice, and I'm a big fan of hers. She was actually British originally, if memory serves me right, there's I think the track listing. Yeah, there, there's the track listing in there. Uh, I'm sure some of them look like cover versions. Have a look. Uh, I might be wrong. No, I'm wrong. I thought it looked like a bit of uh, cover versions. But yeah, this is a great song. And uh, yeah, glad I picked that up for the collection. Lita Ford, check her out. She's really, really good. Um, old Lita. Well, I'll call her old. She, well, she's probably older than me, but she can't be that much older than me. But yeah. Now, this record will, will please Mark C with a G. Uh, if you like Bay Area Frash, I've got the Forbidden Life. Uh, my, my heart nearly stopped when I picked this baby up. Raw Evil, live at... I can't even see it. 
Um, Raw Evil Live. It's something else, but unfortunately my eyesight's that deteriorated that bad. Can't tell you. But it's a Bay Area thrash band. It's forbidden. I can see that much. But yeah, I can't wait to give this a spin. I've got another one coming of theirs. Mark C held that one up. But I've got this at a really, really good price. And that's the book look to it. Do you like your thrash metal? Um, there you go. Was this the band that started the death metal up? I'm sure it was responsible uh, for starting death metal. But I may be wrong. If someone knows, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, in the um, comments below, but I'm pretty sure that the Forbidden was the the uh, they were they were doing a fresh, but that's how the death metal started. I know Napalm Death were responsible for a lot of it because they used to perform in the Mermaid in Birmingham. But I think the Forbidden was the other band, but Mark C G, with a G will correct me if I'm wrong. But there you go, got that one. Now another one I got was this baby, uh, Lizzie Borden. Uh, Master of Disguise, the 25th anniversary edition with a bonus DVD. Um, I, I must admit, I saw this one for 8 quid and I thought this is going in my collection. And that's all what's on it at the back. And you've got the CD, Masters of Disguise, all that stuff. DVD, you've got the making of Master of Disguise. Then you've got the DVD 2, The Murderous Metal Row Show Live. I've got some of Lizzie Bourne stuff back in the day and I really liked him. He did that shock rock as well, you know, like Alice Cooper, Wasp and that sort of stuff. And I, I saw him recently on YouTube. He's packed on a lot of weight since the 80s, but he has gone a bit. But he's still going today, I believe. But yeah, when I saw this, you don't see the... I, I don't... You know, some of the lads might come across this stuff a lot. I personally don't. But uh, yeah, there you go. And uh, there you go. So I picked that one up for the collection. Uh, in my hometown of Telford, I don't see this lot stuff a lot. Now, the next one I picked up was this one, uh, Blind Guardian. This is another live 2 CD pack, and this is Blind Guardian Live. It's a lot earlier. I've been after this one. I've got a feeling I might have got this, but I don't think I have, so I bought it. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I haven't. This is, I can't see the date. But you get CD1, CD2. And I'm sure this is the one I'm after, 100%. But, uh, yeah, another Blind Guardian live uh, CD. Um, another band that made me eyes pop out was this band. And uh, this is a record, a band, American band called Fate's Warning. I know Scott Waters will know about these. Uh, but if you're into, it's like American prog rock. If you're into, uh, I can't think of their name. It's just escaped me. Uh, I've had a brain freeze. Mike Portnoy, Dream Theatre, uh, that sort of stuff. But I like this. Is another great band. And I got this one, which was No Exit, uh, Awaken the Guardian, and this one. I've never seen these before. And you get two disc one, disc two, disc three with a DVD. Uh, it's just amazing. It's just out of this world. And I've got the Spectre Within. It includes A Night on Brocken. Two CDs for the price of one. They were in a generous mood that night. They must have been giving away the stuff. It was originally on Metal Blade. Uh, looks like 92, but you have to forgive me. My eyesight's not what it was and I can't see it. But yeah, I picked all this up. I ain't going to show them now because uh, of time. But, um, yeah, I thought I'd show this lot. But one, what I'll do is I'll make another video and uh, we'll discuss them even closer. But, yeah. So the next lot I've got is, yes, um, everybody goes on about Uengo and Lee Malmsteen. He's got his Rising 4 CD. And you get a free poster with this one. It's a nice looking box. And for a fiver, I'm not walking away with that, because his stuff's really expensive. Um, I can't pronounce it. It's something alchemy, I think it is, Rising Force. But there you go. And uh, I think the post, the po po yeah, the poster's still intact. So when you got get these boxes, be careful. Because although it says you're getting a poster, you've got to check, because nine times out of ten, you don't actually get a poster with them. But this box you do. And, uh, yeah, if you like uh, Yuengui, this is 1999. Um, but he produced it, and if you're into him, that'll be for you. Yeah, I bought that one. Another favourite band, 
I love and I've loved this band since back in the day is Flotsam and Jetsam. I think they were from Phoenix, Arizona or somewhere in that. Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, mate, but I'm sure they were from your neck of the woods, Arizona, that area. I'm pretty sure of it anyway. And uh, this one made me eyes pop out as well. This is Quattro, or I hope I'm pronouncing that, of 1992. Um, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, you get Flotsam and Jetsam live. Uh, in Phoenix, I'm sure that's where they come from. Um, I may be wrong. If please correct me below. You're getting all their hits and stuff, and it's all live. Yeah, I like like uh, Blackmore Rules. Greg the Egg. I love live records. That's why I always buy them live. Yeah. Now, nearly coming to the end of the CDs, and you've got to agree this has been a dig, <laughs> amazing dig. I shall definitely go back again. This was another record that made me head pop out. This is Tesla Live, uh, Alive in Europe. They recorded at Barcelona, Spain, Hamburg and Germany in 2009. I can't wait till I play this one. It's even got one of those gold stickers on as well. Uh, look, the reason why they used to put those gold stickers on is you can't remove them. Uh, we used to put them on when we made CDs. And if you try and remove it, it li you cannot take them off. But I've never seen this one before, Tesla Alive. Can't wait to give that one a spin. Um, but yeah. Now, this Re Rene at uh, Holzman Metal put this guy in their head. And what happened was he showed the last video he did, he was talking about Udo. And uh, some of the records he, he held up were really, really expensive. But I got my two cheap. Uh, because I thought to myself, if these are expensive, because I checked a couple of the ones out Renee held up. And that Holy album, it cost a lot of money. Uh, think a lot of money. I could never afford a record like that now. So basically I thought I'd better cover me back. I'd better buy them now in case the price shoots. But I got this one. This is Erdo's Dominator. Um, black and white and speed demon and it's got some hits on here and stuff and I also got this record um, Red Raptor uh, real heavy metal front cover you can't beat that and uh, you get videos and that everything on that it looks like uh, something of good quality nice colour as well but yeah Udo is one of my favourites um, but uh, you know, if you don't know, he's a singer in the band except, and I'm a massive fan of you, though. And it's just out of this. Well, I won't show you the booklet again, but I treat myself to these two, um, you know. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to give these a spin. And uh, yeah, amazing. So I thought to myself, I better pick them up because I haven't got much post except um, Udo stuff in the collection. And sort of Rene, um, he sort of. Um, pointing me out to that fact so I haven't got much so I thought I'd better rectify that um, right ne two left CDs wise now we're at 18 minutes this was another record that made me head spin and um, you get bonus DVD and you get the main record but it says official festival bootleg but it's in one of their official covers and this is a German band called The Rage or Rage I think Metal Mickey or somebody held one of these up uh, but yeah, I've got some of their stuff on vinyl. They've been going for years, this band have. And I'm pretty sure they're, they're uh, still going. In fact, I know they're still going. But their stuff's amazing. Uh, this German metal, can't get enough of it. But I, I bought that one as well. Never come across it before. What I've got to do is there's a lot of death metal there as well. And uh, I didn't pick that up uh, because I just could not afford it. Although they're going very cheap. Um, you get five records for 20 quid. Um, plus, you know, I just could not sort of, you know, I grab the whole lot. And it would have cost me serious money. So I had to basically choose the stuff I wanted over what, I, you know, you desired. Like, otherwise I bought the whole shop. Um, but uh, I left a Rush album. There was a Rush Live album, Greg. But it was one of their later albums, so I left it. Because I wanted to be able to afford this lot. But last but not least, and this record, I, this is a holy grail item to me, and I didn't leave it last deliberately. This is The American Way by Sacred Reich. Uh, this is another band, this is original Road Racer issue as well. 
Uh, this is another band I've always loved. Can't beat it. I must admit, I've been out of this record, you know, near on forever. And that's inside the cover. And uh, just out, out of this world. Um, I've got one of their records, but I could not believe it when I found I found this. Uh, anything by Sacred Reich, you never see it at record stores, and when you do it, tends, especially on vinyl, it's eye-watering expensive. Um, they did have... I did have a look at the heavy metal vinyl. Um, there was har hardly anything there, and I had most of it. There was an elder by Kiss, I think, was there. Uh, well, they had John Lord, the one I've got that. Um, that uh, that's there, uh, and that was about it. And a couple of Iron Maiden records at thirty quid. There were these picture discs, I think, all these presentations. But uh, now nah, I thought, leave them. I, I wouldn't pay thirty quid for an Iron Maiden record anyway. But uh, I'm glad I didn't I got these. This is, yeah, Sacred Reich. But that concludes the CDs. And the next, uh, last but not least, this will put a smile on Cloudy Mulder's face. Uh, this is one of those Music for Nations, uh, Mad Tracks 2, Beyond the Metal Zone. Uh, I must admit, the reason why I picked it up is it's got a sabotage, it's holocaust on it. Tigers of Pantang Waiting, Legs Diamond, The Fugitive, Metallica's Disposable Heroes, um, Wasted, that was Pete Way's band, uh, Robin Thrower, He's Good Exciter, uh, Thrasher, and Legs Diamond again. But yeah, it was a really, really good album. Got it at a good price as well. Five, five, it was only a fiver. Um, I wouldn't pay much more for it. It's got a bit of damage at the back. Um, I thought I wouldn't pay, it's not worth more than a five quid. But I thought of Cloudy when I bought this, Andy. I thought of you, brother. And uh, it's got one of these nice um, gatefolds. And I, I love these records because uh, when you look at these old comp in the old days, um, these compilation albums were the only things we could afford. That's why I've got so many of them. But I thought, think to myself, man, I wish I bought the records inside, because these, these records now are big money items, like that Metallica's Master of Puppets. You know, a good condition with them, you're looking at 50 quid plus. Um, you know, some of the price on that Exciter album, and never see that in the wild. But if you were to come across these albums now inside, a lot of them you need a mortgage, you know, to, to unless you was born a billionaire or very wealthy. But yeah, I'm not going to show you the record. There's two records in there as well. But yeah, you've got some great stuff on there. And uh, I thought I'd buy myself that. It is a good price. But I say, because of the damage on there, I wouldn't have paid more than a fiver for it. But it's got a nice bit of cover art as well. That's what I love about heavy metal. You've got some great cover art. Some sort of heavy metal robot or something. And, uh, you know, it's just out of this world. But anyway, folks... I hope you've enjoyed the show. And uh, it you know it has been a privilege this one. Um because it, you know when you go digging it's special. But when you go digging in your hometown and you have have such oh, oops I'm having a bit of accident there and you have such a good day and you pull a first twisted sister album that was at they actually do a live show in Reading, you've got to admit that is good. Um I've had an amazing day. So, it hasn't gone on long, long as I thought I, the, I had this film. Um, I'm sorry I'm getting a bit tongue-tied now, plus my nose is itching because I've got the same allergy as Scott Waters, I think. But I hope you've enjoyed today's offering, today's show. And I'm going to be down south until next week. Uh, but I'm gonna be, I might go back next Tuesday. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon, folks. Love each other and take e take care of each other. And, uh, yeah, all the best.